So, we're looking at the camera there. Yep. <laughs> you know that already. Thank you, guys. So, I am here with my good buddy. Exhibitors, please. Put Adam Barrow. Oh, I'm going to introduce myself. My good yes. friend Adam Barillet, who I absolutely love. I kiss him yeah, now, but I leave lipstick on his cheek. And this is his wonderful book, Crystal Collections. You want to hold it? I will do. Do tell us about your book because it's awesome. Okay, so the reason I wrote my book, there's lots of crystal books out there, but a lot of them will tell you that a rose quartz is good for love, or a citrine is good for happiness, and you get them home, and you don't know what to do with them. So mine talks about what they're good for, but also how to actually use them. So it's got 101 different crystals, all full color pages and shows you everything you can do with all the crystals and actually start to get those things that you're actually looking for in your life. And I can vouch for that because I've been working with crystals for probably 15-20 years now and for a long time I had a lot of crystals just sitting anywhere in drawers around the house doing absolutely nothing. What's what's your simile that you use when they're just sitting around doing nothing? They're like a Ferrari in the garage. Ooh, what's the point? How painful having a Ferrari in the garage. So I wanted to pick Adam's brains this morning to do a bit of a vlog about crystals because he is the most knowledgeable person. I've been sitting next to Adam for the last three days, uh, two days, another two days to go. Uh, listening to people come up and ask Adam lots of questions about crystals, he is an absolute walking encyclopedia of knowledge, most amazing knowledge about crystals and, and their origins, the ways to use them, the meaning, the different medicines that go with it in terms of plant medicine, what else do you work with? Oh, with animal, animals, with uh, astrological as well, I love working with essential oils, bring in any other energies that work really well with crystals will really help to like oomph, give it to oomph to that. So we're going to walk and talk because I want to pick his brains. So Adam, how many years have you been doing the MBS festivals for? Uh, this is my third year, so I think I've done about 10 festivals in total. And you speak all around Australia? I do, yes. I'm based in Perth, but I you know, love coming over to the East Coast as well and looking at going wherever I can get, whoever will take me. And wherever Adam goes, he books a full week of crystal courses. So if you go to Adam's website... Uh, just adambarillate.com you'll find all the details there. Check out all these courses, but check out what we got here. For someone who's starting out with crystals, how do you actually work with the tumble stones? Well, the great thing about tumble stones is they're obviously a really small, carryable size, and you can basically pop them anywhere, in pockets, women are popping them in bras, anything you want. So the thing with a crystal, if you're working with a crystal, whatever that will be, you want to have it close to you. If you imagine that you've got an aura and it's got an aura, and it's no good sitting in another room, you want to have them close to you. So if you're working with a particular one, have it near you all during the day and then pop it in your pillow slip at night. And that's when you start to get the full effects of crystals. Ideally, you want to have it for you at least a week before you're going to start getting that full effect. And if people are starting with just tumble stones, they're just entering into learning how to work with crystals, like, how do they select them? Okay, there's two different ways you can do that. It's kind of like being at a buffet. So imagine we're at Sizzler or something like that. If you're at that buffet, what you do is whatever you're drawn to, just go with that. If you feel like eating tomatoes, eat tomatoes. And if you feel like picking up rose quartz, pick up rose quartz. You may want to read a book afterwards and actually find out why you're drawn to that. Or you may just go with that. Now, sometimes people feel a little bit bamboozled by all the different colors and things like that. So that's when something like my book is great because there will be different indexes in there that will tell you something for self-esteem, something for prosperity, and you can choose your crystals that way and then come and choose the one that you're drawn to here. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a really 101 question. Mm -hmm. Like, why even work with crystals in the first place? Okay, so what makes a crystal special from something yeah. different is it has, basically crystals have a crystalline structure. So what that means is they grow in an order of shapes, seven different shapes, triangles, hexagons, squares, and so on. Because of this, they hold a lot more energy than other items like paper or wood or glass or anything like that. And when you, as you know, with a lot, uh, cupboard, if we tidy it up and we get everything neat and packed, we can fit a lot more in it. And so they hold a lot more energy. And so that energy, energy ebbs and flows, and we can move that energy to change our will and to manifest things in our life. So, so each crystal has a specific energy? Yeah, exactly. That, that's reliant on its structure, on its colour, on its chemical composition. All these things interact. It's kind of like people or star signs. You know, they've all got slightly different traits, so they all bring different things to your life. Should we all be instantly feeling 
the energy of the crystal. Do you know what? I didn't feel a friggin' thing from a friggin' crystal for the first six years I was working with them. I was wondering what all these ladies in cheesecloth were yabbering on about. <laughs> so, but, but what I noticed is I did notice when I would set my intentions and kind of meditate with the crystals and I'd get one for prosperity or love or health or something, I'd start to see shifts in my life and I was opening up to those shifts. So although I wasn't feeling anything, I was seeing evidence and things like that. And so that gave me faith. I kind of think it's like, a, you know, you take your car to a mechanic and it sounds fine to you, but the mechanic can hear that the alternator's out. And just for some people, it comes naturally feeling energy from crystals. Other people, it may take years and, or they may never feel it, but it's just getting tuned into what you're actually sensing there. And it's just about giving yourself that grace and that time to actually experience that. Let's come around here. What stands out for you in all of these goodies okay well one of my favorites is we all know moonstone this is a bit of a traditional one and we normally just see it in white but there's actually you can get moonstone in a whole variety of colors in a peach in a gray a brown okay. even a rare green and also you can see this beautiful stunning egg up here it's a black moonstone okay, serious yeah so this one here is really really good i've just manifested one in my hand a smaller one this one you know really good when people are asking about psychic attack this is one of the best black crystals for psychic attack it also helps you connect with that kind of mysterious or crone energy of the um of the feminine the divine feminine give so me give me give me pardon? you like <laughs> there me, you go <laughs> <laughs> so this is really really good for kind of getting into the mysteries of the wisdom of femininity and you know this helps older women especially stay in their power because you know Unfortunately, society often doesn't honor women as they get older, but this crystal here is really good for helping them stand in that power and know that they've got the wisdom from the experience of life and that, you know, even after motherhood, they can pass that on. So it's a very crone or grandmother kind of energy in Black Moonstone. And, so what, really and like what do you one. mean by psychic attack? Psychic attack basically is, you know, when you kind of just feel that people are not, there's people around you not speaking favorably of you and that energy actually starts to affect you. That's kind of how I define psychic attack. So, you know, trouble may be at work and you can kind of hear or feel that people are you know talking about your things going on behind your back and that starts to weigh on you that's psychic attack so this helps to empower you and lift you above that okay beautiful thank you i, I had no idea moonstone came in so many colors mm. wealth of knowledge what else shines bright for okay. you in this this is one of my cabinet? absolute favorites and I'm, we I'm wearing one on my finger here and it's these ones here and i actually refer to them as super quartzes so you can see there's all different colors in there. You can see purple and that's amethyst. You can see brown and that's smoky quartz and some clear quartz and other little crystals grow inside it. So super quartzes, they're found sometimes called super seven in Brazil or like 23, it comes from Canada and you get some from Madagascar, India and different places like this. These crystals are so nice for balancing and bringing people together. So it's got some grounding, some uplifting. So really good if you're blending families or communities or things like that. But on a more global scale, why I like this crystal is I believe this is a crystal actually helping terrorism pick up Santa Claus. Just got American Indian passing by and jingling his bells. So this is this is a this is a crystal of unity because it's all different crystals working together in a powerhouse. So I believe you know with things like terrorism or segregation, any or discrimination, any of those things, it's where one part of the crystal or one part of the community doesn't feel part, and this helps to bring everyone together. So I love this crystal when I wear it. It's like I've drunk about a liter of Coca Cola. It's very euphoric, very energizing, and really good at bringing people together. So, it's so family one. units, teamwork, and anything. Bring workplace. small communities together or the global community together. Okay. How would you physically use it? Like, what would you do with that piece this, there? This one's a great one. You want to wear this, so it changes your approach. So, if you catch yourself um, having, you know, discriminatory thoughts or, or having an issue with any people. And this is really good for opening your heart up and that type of thing as well. It also works with the two other chakras, which are called the Soul Star Chakra and the Earth Star Chakra. Now, these are kind of 15 centimeters above our head and below our feet. And I always say that a tree can only grow as high as its roots go deep. So what that means is basically we need to, in growing spiritually, we also need to stay connected to the Earth. And this helps us to do both, stretch up and go deep. You know, you think about many people are very spiritual, but they forget to pay their bills or pick up the kids from the school. Whereas great spiritual teachers like the Dalai Lama, very grounded and very spiritual. And this is a crystal that will help you to do that as well by wearing it. Really good to make grids as well, putting crystals all together in a kind of geometric shape, however you're inspired to do that, and devote that to world unity and global unity. Especially when we have big terrorist attacks or things like that, and you're feeling insecure at home, you can start to send your own energy into something positive and then outlay that into the community as well. Do you talk about grids in your book? I do, yes, yep, okay. definitely different grids. And, and I like to, again, I like to make it easy and simple and accessible, and you can find that in my book.
Awesome. And if you, if there was one other thing in this cabinet. Oh, we're gonna go down low now. I want to show you the stunning one down here. This is called Celesto. The blue one. Blue one here, here, and here. Celesto. You know, it's, it's very angelic energy. So if you resonate with the angels, this is a beautiful crystal to work with. But for me, it's also a crystal of beauty. It allows us to see beauty in the world. Not just in the, you know, not just notice the beautiful things, but to see beauty and the perfection in everything. There's a great um, saying by a teacher called Rumi, and I, I'm going to stuff it up greatly. But he says basically that he goes walking in the forest and he can see why that tree is bent that way and that one's burnt because of something that happens. And then we walk out into the street and we can't understand why someone's like that and being like that. And he says, from now on, I want to treat people like trees and try and understand why they are the way they are instead of judging them. And this helps you to kind of see that beauty as well. It also helps us to connect with another beauty that's really important, and that's our own beauty. And to allow that to actually shine out and to understand our value and to be like an angel. So I really like to work with Celestite to kind of bring that celestial kind of angelic beauty into your life inside and out. I told you Adam is a phenomenal wealth of knowledge. I, I have already learnt so much just in the five minutes we've had here in the stand. Imagine what I'd learn if we spent the whole day looking at all the crystals. Um, and sometimes I can get overwhelmed with uh, the information and, and I'm just keeping, you know, retaining all the facts about crystals. But um, there is so much to learn and we all need to start somewhere. So start with the tumble stones, with whatever piece is calling you with the jingle bells that one of us. To start with one, I, you know, a lot of time when we love crystals, we go from one to the other to the other to the other and we end up speed dating our crystals. We don't get to know any of them. So just try a bit of crystal monogamy. Pick one that you're drawn to <laughs> and, and sit with it, work with it for a week, you know, or a couple of weeks. And once you're familiar with that one, then move on to another one. You know, I didn't learn about all the crystals in one day. It's been 20 years that I've kind of got this knowledge. So don't feel that when you buy a book and there's all these crystals, you need to learn it all in one day. Get your personal relationship with each one of them. So, a bit of monogamy, That's uh, speed beautiful. dating. And they are, when you say, you know, personal relationship with each one, they are their own person. You know, they, oh, they are in an uh, elemental being and they are their own entities. So, respecting crystals in that sense and working with them in relationship rather than it's viewing them as simply being mm. an object, um, I think is so special. So, Thank you so much, Adam. My pleasure. Thank you Love for having this guy. me. We have so much fun on the stand. Such a pleasure to work with you. And thank you for taking the time to share some of your knowledge. It's like an iceberg. That is just the absolute tip of the Adam Barillet iceberg. So um, that's a pretty good metaphor given you know, crystals, icebergs, crystalline structures. Perfect. Way well to go, done. Juliet. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah.